Hi guys, this is John Adams from the Rehab Documentation Guru, and I'm going to continue with the series on interpreting standardized tests. And today we're going to take a look at one that's commonly used by OT, although sometimes PTs use it as well, and that is the Barthel Index. Just like superheroes have their origin story, well, so does the Barthel Index. Uh, Barthel Index came into effect in 1965 uh, by Believe it or not, a guy by the name of Barthel, and, and there's another guy named Mahoney. I guess they could have ended up calling it the Mahoney test, but they went with Barthel. Now, the original test, as it was designed, was a 100-point scale that basically was measured in increments of five points, and it looked at 10 categories of ADLs and mobility. In 1988, though, a guy by the name of Collins and a group of other researchers developed a modified version, and some of you have probably utilized the modified Barthel. It is a 1 to 20 point scale, and it's said to be, in some instances, a little bit more sensitive than the Barthel index itself. There's been a lot of different studies, or I should say different versions of this test, but the most the two most common ones are the standard Barthel and the modified Barthel index. Originally, it was designed for stroke patients with them in mind and basically looking at them in the acute setting and whether or not they were capable of moving to an independent living setting. However, we've seen the application of the Barthel index across the board to various and sundry patient populations. The functional categories that are looked at by the Barthel index include the ones you see on your slides, so I don't really need to repeat all of them, but you will notice something about them. One thing is that they do blend typical areas of functionality that both PT and OT address. And so one thing I would like to say, and I've talked to some of you who have been in my live presentations, I want to talk about the fact that if PT and OT are both treating the patient, it is not a good idea for both of them to use the Barthel index because that duplication of a test, number one, may demonstrate differences in test scores. Now, the intraorator reliability on the Barthel is generally excellent. However, the possibility of variability might skew the results you're trying to share with the third party payer. That's one problem. Number two, it might look like you're duplicating your services, not only in your evaluation, but also in the treatment to improve that Barthel index. And so it's generally not a good idea for both disciplines to use it, even though, as you can see, it's very applicable in some cases to both disciplines. So the whole purpose of this video is to talk about interpreting this test. And so what is this test telling us? Well, it tells us different things, but one of the things it tells us is a general range of the patient's disability in mobility and ADLs. And so as you can see on the slide, there are ranges that we generally look for. One of the things that research has proven is that patients that score within 80 to 100 on the Barthel index should be basically independent. And so that's important. So think about um, that for a minute. If you've got a patient who is in a long-term care setting or a short-term rehab or home health, and they score an 80 to 100, 100 points, then basically what we're saying is they don't need us. And so maybe that test was not sensitive enough to really capture the functional deficits. And so I probably wouldn't use that interpretation at that point. Um, but it might be very appropriate, obviously, if you've got the other levels that are showing up with the Barthel index, to proving that they need some kind of assistance and they probably should not be left alone. So what else does this test tell us? Well, one of the things we've got to look at is what are called the psychometric parameters, the research-based parameters that are revolving around this test that give us some useful data that we can share um, and also look at whether it's a reliable and a valid test to utilize for certain patients. Um, one of the things we got to look at is the floor and ceiling effect. So for example, does the test really show how low the patient can go? So for example, if the patient scores the lowest possible on the Barthel, is there a possibility that they could actually go lower than the test can really capture? Or ceiling, if the patient scores at the highest level they can go in the Barthel, can they go any possibly higher that the Barthel's not capturing? 
And sometimes uh, what's been found with the Barthel is that it does not capture as low as or as high as the patient can go. And so if you're scoring uh, really low in the patient and it looks like they can't go any lower, there's a possibility you're not capturing all the potential decline they could have and the same thing with improvement. So you got to look at the Barthel and say, is this the most appropriate test to capture truly the functionality of where the patient is? Um, now, it does generally have good to excellent test retest reliability, meaning that if I compare one set of data I get on one patient and then I take the test again on the pa same patient, it gives me really good data. Uh, it may be more sensitive to determining the functionality and the improvements in functionality in a patient that tends to be more on the acute side or subacute phase rather than chronic. Um, and that's been shown through research. It would appear, based on the literature search that I did, that the modified Barthel index may be a favored tool over the standard Barthel index. And that's going to be that tw to 20 point range with single point increments that uh, we would look at. So anyway, uh, something to keep in mind, you might look at the modified Barthel as being a little bit more sensitive tool. Um, now, let's talk about some psych psychometrics that are really important. When we're documenting evidence basis for the effectiveness of what you, you have done, two things that we can generally keep in mind is one is minimal clinical important difference. Now, what is the minimal, minimal clinical important difference? Well, basically what research has shown is that if we measure a patient with a modified Barthel, and that's what the MCID is applied to, and they gain on, on average 1.85 points on their modified Barthel index score, those patients are saying from a subjective standpoint that they feel like they're doing better functionally. And so if our patients on the modified Barthel score 1.85 points or higher, well, realistically two points or higher, then we can say without a doubt, because of research, the patient has truly made a functional gain that they will be satisfied with. Now, the standard Barthel has a minimal detectable change measurement associated with it. That is basically an objective measure saying that we've exceeded what the standard error of measure should be, meaning that uh, we're, we're, we're not, or, or, you know, this is not just a variability in how we did the test. It's actually a true change that demonstrates functional improvement and that is 4.02 points, or you can round it to four points. So if you make four points of improvement on the Barthel or higher, and generally that's going to be five because it's a five-point increment scale, you are truly showing functional improvement. That's the kind of thing that you want to tell a third-party payer when you're utilizing the Barthel um, in your documentation. So how do we utilize this test in our documentation? Well, when do you want to document this kind of thing? Some of you have taken my class and on documentation, and we've talked about the fact that a minimal reporting period for progress is every 10 treatment days or 30 calendar days, whichever comes first. So when you should be probably documenting a Barthel or modified Barthel is at eval time to get a baseline at every 10 treatment days or 30 calendar days, whichever comes first. And then, of course, a discharge. And what that'll do is it'll help establish a pattern of improvement. And one of the things that you can also do when you're interpreting this is uh, at those intervals, if you're not seeing the change that you would want to see, either with the modified Barthel, you're not achieving the minimal clinical important difference, or with the standard Barthel, you're not achieving the minimal detectable change, well, it's time to reassess whether your treatment is really being effective and whether you're making the improvements that prove the reasonableness of your care. Um, so another thing you want to do with the modified Barthel or the standard Barthel is it's a functional assessment. And it means, and if you've been to my course, you know we talk about underlying impairments. So if you find deficits functionally in the modified Barthel or the Barthel index, you, it, you really need to get delve into the underlying impairments behind those functional deficits. That gives you more analysis of what the modified Barthel or the Barthel means. The other thing you might want to consider, and this will help you remi be reminded to measure it, is consider goals. 
goals with the Barthel, and keeping in mind that it has an MCID for the modified Barthel and an MDC for the Barthel, you might include those as your goals. So for the modified Barthel, you should at least shoot for a two-point gain, and for the uh, Barthel, at least a four-point gain, or realistically a five-point gain based on its scoring. So that'll help you show actual improvement, and a goal set that way will be fine. Also with analysis, you can document in your analysis what those score gains mean. So it's good to remind the reviewers who are looking at your claim about whether or not this is something they should pay for. If you want to demonstrate you made reasonable progress, you can point out that, hey, look, I've achieved the minimal cl clinical important difference or the minimal detectable change on this test. That means I've achieved a true outcome and that's worth paying for. And that's a really good message to send. Well, folks, that's it. Um, there's a lot more information on these tests, as well as a lot of research since 1965 when the Barthel Index first came out. A special thanks to Wikipedia uh, for providing some basic information. Obviously, that's a public platform that all people contribute to. But even more specifically, thank you to Stroke Engine and SR Ability Lab, which has got very detailed uh, by content experts, descriptions of these tests, the psychometric parameters behind them, and maybe a little bit of the history involved with these tests. Uh, but the Barthel Index is a wonderful test you can utilize for your patients that applies uh, generally across the board for multiple disabilities and also in multiple settings. And I hope you found this helpful. Um, so utilize the Barthel Index and other standardized tests to help demonstrate the reasonableness of what you are doing. And when you analyze that test more deeply, you'll get into just demonstrating the necessity of your brain to make sense of it for that third party payer. Because ultimately, this is the rehab documentation guru hoping you get paid for what you do. Please comment and suggest any other tests that you'd like me to do. And I'll talk to you later.